which is so much more exciting and so much more life-giving than Halloween will ever be. And I guess we all play our part in the fact they haven't heard the message yet. What are we going to do about that? But I want to tell you in particular about what happened on Thursday night when Margareta and I came back from our holiday and parked up on the drive. We got out of the car, and there in front of uh, me, uh, on the ground, I just felt it was all wet under my feet and kind of sticky. So I, I got, went down and looked at this stuff and thought, what is this stuff? Anyway, went into the house, we unpacked the car, and this lovely um, neighbour from over the road came over and welcomed us back, and he'd been parking his car on our drive and all that for the holiday time. And he said, did you see the incident? What happened outside your house half an hour ago? I said, no, 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 because we, we've only just come back. He said, well, there were these late, old teenage girls, um, late teens, who came and waited outside your house, and then uh, they, they, they had this, these boxes of eggs. This was Thursday night. That was Halloween, wasn't it, Thursday? And then they went out on the stood in, on, in the road waiting for a car to come round the corner here. And a car apparently came round the corner and the girls wouldn't get off the road. So the driver, man, lives in round the corner, apparently got out and was there. They threw all the eggs at him. They completely splattered this guy with eggs. Hence the eggs on shells and stuff on the ground in front of our house. And I thought... I'm, I'm on the right track here. There is more to, there is something really sinister that's building up with this Halloween tradition. It's not all just fun and games and trick or treat and stuff like that. It's actually something really dark and sinister. What would possess these girls to do something so awful to this poor man? And how's he gonna recover from that? What is going on here? Ephesians 6.12. Our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our battle is against the dark forces of this world, of this cosmos. There really is a spiritual battle going on all the time. It's not all nice and lovely like it is here in church this morning, is it, out there? I've been looking at um, the book of Exodus at the moment, working my way through it quite carefully and I've noticed that uh, Moses you remember before he goes back to Egypt uh, to liberate the people who are in captivity before he goes back God says I'm going to give you a sign and he says I'm, the sign so that you can show people that I am the Lord and I'm with you and the sign will be this staff you'll have this staff and when you tap it bang it on the ground it'll turn into a snake remember that bit yeah when he comes and does this uh, before the Egyptian um, people before their people the magicians grab their, uh, their staffs too and bang them on the ground and they turn to snakes too so the spiritual world of our Lord Jesus Christ, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the spiritual world we read about in the Bible is going in parallel to a spiritual world of darkness. And the very same miraculous things that people can do in the name of the living Lord can be done in the name of the evil one as well. Yeah? And as you work your way through the book of Exodus and the whole story of the liberation of the people of God, you see that there's this massive spiritual battle going on against the forces of good and the forces of darkness. And amidst that, there is huge confusion as to what spiritual truth actually is. We had a word this morning that spoke directly into that in our hour of prayer before the service. The picture was of a whole load of children on the playground playing and actually fighting a bit and getting dirty and getting wounded by each other. 
And then a whistle is blown. A whistle is blown. The children recognize the sound of the whistle. The teachers come out, lift the children up who have been beaten up or on the playground ground, yeah, and they bring them all back into the school and order is restored. They recognize the whistle. Eventually, this happens. The whistle is blown. It's as though the Lord says, stop. I am the Lord, and I will liberate my people and have my way with them. But why does God not step in? Why does he not stop those girls outside the vicarage uh, drive there and, and prevent that happening? Why did he not prevent that a man who drove his car around the corner here about two months, no, yeah, two months ago, and round the corner and into our little Ajila and half destroyed it when we were sleeping in bed at the night? What's going on outside on my drive at the moment? I'm beginning to wonder. Some kind of spiritual battle. Two big events in a short space of time. Why does God not step in and stop that happening? And I think it's as though he's saying to all of us, will you go on trusting me against all the evidence and wait for the evidence to change? That's one summary of Hebrews 11.1, 1, isn't it? The description of what real faith is. God allows the stakes to be raised. He allows the spiritual confusion to grow to test his people whether they will go on trusting that he is the Lord and in the end will have his way. If I can look up, I've got some passages here in Exodus just to draw to your attention. If I can just find them in Exodus 5, no need to particularly look them up. But I want just to draw on one or two things to show you how how, how confusing the situation gets in in, in chapter 5 and verse 20. Um, When they left Pharaoh, they found Moses and Aaron waiting to meet them. And they said, may the Lord look on you and judge you. You have made us obnoxious to Pharaoh and his officials and have put a sword in their hand to kill us. This is the complaint of the Israelites overseers, they go back to Moses and Aaron and say, why are you getting us into such trouble? You're just bringing us nothing but trouble. All this talk of liberation is leading to nothing. Spiritual confusion. Then if you go on to verse 22, chapter 5 of Exodus, Moses returned to the Lord and said, why, Lord, have you brought this trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people, and you have not rescued your people at all. Do you see the the desperate state poor old uh, 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 um, Moses now? Moses gets into spiritual confusion, as though God has gone to sleep, as though nothing's happening. God leaves him in this situation. And then chapter 6 and verses 1 to 5... Going, rolling on. Then the Lord said to Moses, Now you will see what I will do to Pharaoh. Because of my mighty hand, he will let them go. He will let uh, the people go into the, the wilderness to worship the Lord. Because of my mighty hand, he will drive them out of his country. God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but my own name is the Lord. I did not make myself known to them. I also established my covenant with them. Sorry, I, yes. I also established my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant. He's saying, don't worry, hang in there. I'm going to do this. I am going to liberate my people out of slavery in Egypt. Hang in there. But what happens then? The situation gets worse. Just look at the chapters as they roll on. The plagues come, yeah? 
one after another. The plague of blood. And you remember the, some of the plagues, the Egyptian magicians can actually conjure up the same plagues themselves. What is going on? The plague of frogs, the plague of gnats, the plague of flies, the plague on the livestock, the plague of boils, the plague of hail, the plague of locusts, the plague of darkness. The, and then finally, the plague on the firstborn. Before we get to chapter 12 and the Passover, do you see? God allows the spiritual confusion and the stakes to go up and up and up in order that his people will hang in there and hold the faith and hold on to the promises against all the evidence. God, so the scripture tells us, even hardens Pharaoh's heart so that he won't liberate the people and let them go and worship. God appears to almost be active in the process of raising the spiritual confusion and causing this incredible kind of a blockage in the story of, uh, of liberation that he wants to bring. Where was God on Thursday night outside the vicarage when the powers of darkness were overwhelming the street? And, you see, my friends, looking at the finances of our church in the cold light of day, then we have to say that unless something dramatic happens, we're in stuck. Unless something happens dramatic to our finances of our church, we're not going to be able to keep on doing all the wonderful things we've been doing for several years. So what do we do in a crisis like this, a financial crisis? We hang in there. And we recognize that the entire Bible bears testimony to similar situations. Unless something dramatic happens, the Israelites will die in the mud of Egypt. Unless something dramatic happens, the Israelites are going to die in the mud of the Red Sea or by the sword of the Egyptians as they come chasing behind them. Unless something dramatic happens, the wives of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, Zechariah, Hannah and will remain barren. These women will remain barren and it will all run into the sand. Unless something dramatic happens, Israel will simply slide backwards into pagan worship. That's the testimony of the books of kings, isn't it? Yeah? Unless something dramatic happens, they'll just give over completely to their Halloween. Unless something dramatic happens, the exiles there in Babylon in 6th century BC will stay stuck in Babylon and die there and bow the knee to the pagan gods. Unless something dramatic happens, the temple which the Babylonians destroyed will remain a heap of rubble forever. Unless something dramatic happens, the darkness will continue to overshadow us. Unless something dramatic happens, the sick will remain sick and die in their sicknesses. Unless something dramatic happens, sinners will remain sinners and continue to throw eggs at innocent passers-by. Unless something dramatic happens, spiritually arrogant people will never be brought down a peg. Unless something dramatic happens, Lazarus will remain rotting in his tomb. Unless something dramatic happens, Jesus will remain in his tomb forever. Sin, suffering, death will have the last word. And our accounts, our financial accounts will drop in proportion to the numbers of people coming to church will drop terminal decline unless something dramatic happens. Why does God allow this? He allows these things to happen to build trust, to build faith. Tough times, because more important, 
Yes. Difficult times that the scriptures bear witness to. These happen, and these times are potentially more important times than times of superabundance when the land is flowing with milk and honey, when all the calves are being born without problems, when the land is flowing with wheat uh, uh, and the crops are fantastic and all the enemies are kept at bay. Uh, those are great times, but those are the times when the people of God lost the plot and forgot who the God, God was. It's in the times of extreme difficulty and spiritual confusion and uncertainty and testing that real faith, real faith, lasting faith, faith that can go through the furnace is created in the crucible of suffering. So, difficult times financially, but we have them because God is wanting to teach us something through them. Something that perhaps he cannot teach us in any other way than this. Will you hang in with me? Halloween puts us all on the spot. Budgeons walk in the door, and you saw, see all that kit, all that Halloween kit there, don't you? And I asked myself the question, why are budgeons not selling the Bibles? <laughs> I don't get it. Because when I read my Bible, I find it much more exciting and dramatic and captivating than anything that budgeons have to sell me to do with Halloween. What's going on? <laughs> what is going on? Why do budgeons not sell Bibles? Why do these girls down the road not get their spiritual kicks from the Bible? What's going on? Will you keep your nerve? Will you keep your nerve in the middle of this? It'd be easy easy just to up stumps and move down to St. Albans right away, where people presumably, hopefully, don't throw eggs at people outside your house. <laughs> but no, this is the place we're called to be. Will you hold your nerve in the midst of uncertainty? Some of the people in the Bible came to see the promised land. Moses, interestingly, didn't get to see it, did he? Joshua did. And if you look at the great account of, uh, in Hebrews chapter 11, of all the great heroes of faith, actually most of them didn't get to see whatever the promised land would have been for them. They had to hold the faith in the face of spiritual confusion and difficulty. That's what made them heroes. Lord God, we thank you for Jesus, who held his nerve there in Gethsemane when all the forces of hell were collecting and gathering together, we thank you that he held his nerve when on trial before Pilate. We thank you that he kept his cool even in his greatest hour of trial. We thank you that we don't go through this, work, this life with no signs of hope at all. We thank you that you are alive, that you have a future for your people, whatever generation they're living in, whatever situation they're living in. And we pray that you'll give us enough grace, enough revelation, enough mutual support that we will be able to hold the faith until 
we pray we will see the dawning light of your kingdom in this nation once again. And if we don't see it, don't live to see it, we pray that our children and grandchildren will. We hold the torch of faith, the lamp of faith, on their behalf. And we say, Lord God, have your way with us, as you will always do with every generation. Amen. Right. 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 Right.